My name is Tokwe Oshin. I'm a filmmaker from Nigeria, and you're watching Indigo Tongues. I got started in the film industry about 20, I think 21 years ago, 1996. I got into school, Lagos State University, to study theatre, arts, TV and film production. I fell in love with acting from there and then from acting, morphed into directing um, within the industry later in the years and um, I'm here today. Um, along the line, I met mentors like Amaka Igwe, who greatly influenced my being a filmmaker and a director today, particularly a director. I met her in my years as an actor and she felt that you know I had you know more than an eye for acting like I was interested in the nitties of what goes on behind the camera you know and on set and all of that and she encouraged me and you know offered herself to mentor me in filmmaking so yes she is my biggest mentor my biggest influence and also I'm greatly influenced by Ava DuVernay um, I look forward to meeting her because there's a whole lot about her essence and what she does um, that I find myself in. And cut. Some of my most notable work on film, um, my newly released film New Money, which is currently still in the cinemas in Nigeria and will be released in the cinemas in other parts of the world um, later this year. Um, I also have my first feature, which was Journey to Self. Journey to Self was in 2011. Um, it premiered in Paris. It also screened um, in places in the UK. Um, there's also In Line. In Line, uh, my feature film shot in 20... I think we shot it in 2013 and it was released in 2014 into the cinemas as well. I have a couple of short films. Some of the notable ones are The Young Smoker, which is one of my absolute favorites. There's also Till Death Do Us Part 2012. There's also a Reti 2014, um, Crush, and a couple of others. In 2014, I produced and directed a documentary called Amaka's Kim, The Women of Nollywood. Hi, my name is Omonio Boli. My name is Mildred Okwo. My name is Stephanie Linus. My name is Michelle Bello. Hi, my name is Belinda Yanga Ageda. My name is Dorafu Adeleke, aka Lola D. My name is Emma Edelsio. My name is Blessing Esdemingwe. My name is Adela Shikojo. I'm Janice Olashiger. My name is Patience Uvre Mobile. I'm a director. I'm a filmmaker. I'm a filmmaker. I'm a filmmaker. I'm a filmmaker. 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 Um, it's basically about the very few female directors working in Nollywood, how we operate, how we're working in a, in a male-dominated um, career, and what we've suffered, what we're doing now, and what the future is. I thoroughly enjoyed making this um, because it was also dedicated to the memory of Amaka Igwe, who till date has been the biggest um, image when we talk about directing for females in in Nigeria. Nigeria Shooting It Like a Woman was a BBC produced documentary which was coincidentally um, inspired by my documentary Amaka's King the Women of Nollywood. So the premise was basically the same, um, showcasing and profiling the working female directors in Nigeria, um, what it's like, what the climate is, what our struggles are, how our journey has been, what we're doing now and what we're actively doing to change the narrative and story of uh, women working in film in Nigeria today and um, in the future. Some of my TV works uh, are Tinsel. Tinsel, I, I, I think I shot about 600 episodes of Tinsel, 350 episodes of Tinsel. Then there's Hotel Majestic, a telenovela. Um, there's Hush, there's Forbidden, all telenovelas. And one of my absolute favorites is MTV Sugar, which is the most recent work. Um, earlier on in my career, when I met Mo Abudu, the media mogul, owner of Ebony Life uh, TV, I produced Moments with Mo. Um, I think this was in 2009 or 2008, 2008 in Lagos. Um, it sort of kick-started what would become our working relationship. We have then gone on to work on projects like The Wedding Party 2, the movie 50, um, her series Castle and Castle, which is also going to be released later this year, and a couple of other projects. 
I look forward to um, people like Eva Duvernay um, looking into Africa and looking at Africa and particularly Nigeria uh, for co-productions. I love what she's doing with Queen Sugar and I think it also goes in line with what she's doing with Array and women and women of color and all of that. And I think it will be a fantastic idea. I mean, to look at African productions in the future and particularly look, look at, I mean, what is doubtless the biggest uh, film industry in Africa, which is Nollywood, which is Nigeria, uh, for these collaborations, work with our directors, work with our producers to, you know, create something nice and authentically African. I am not particularly a great fan of the term Nollywood um, as a representation of what the Nigerian film industry is. Um, if I had my way, I'd always say the Nigerian film industry for several reasons. Um, number one, Nollywood um, alludes to being a copy of Hollywood, if you know what I mean. But also secondly and most importantly, Nigeria is a big, big country and we have several film industries within the same country. We have the industry in the north, we have the industry in Asaba, we have the film industry down here in Lagos and we have in other parts of the country as well. And believe it or not, we operate in very different ways. So for outsiders, when you say Nollywood, they want to think of it as the Nigerian you know, general film industry. But there are Nigerian filmmakers who practice here in Nigeria who do not want to re refer to themselves as Nollywood or who would not call themselves Canniewood. If you go up north, for instance, um, it's called Canniewood. I mean, if you get what I mean. So in order to be inclusive, you know, I'd rather we were referred to as a Nigerian film industry. Uh, the challenges of working in the Nigerian film industry as a female filmmaker. Um, top on that list will be the fact that uh, mostly the men behave like they humor us, uh, which is what we see time and time again. We, uh, you know, there's that behavior towards us like, oh, that's so cute, she's a film director. Oh, nice and cute, you know. So we now need to help her to do what she needs to do. You know, they, there isn't that initial belief that this is actually what you do. You know what you're doing, you're passionate about it. There's always that feeling, you know, that, oh, all girls are harebrained, all girls are, you know, dumb and all of that. So there is that. So you, on every set you get on, um, especially TV sets where you have little or no control over the crew, there's always that second guessing of, hmm, does she know what she's doing? Hmm, who is this? Okay, we need to push, we need to pad, we need to help her until you are then able to, you know, assert your position and, um, your skill as a director and then it's realized that oh she does know what she's doing she's not you know hair brain so that basically is a, the, the basic problem with being a female director in Nigeria um, you know we feel we're being humored uh, feminism in this day and age comes with a lot of arguments um, for me I'm big on gender equality because duh, I'm a woman and First of all, I believe that all human beings are equal and should be treated equally and should be paid equally if they're on the same skill level. Um, African women, well, maybe some are like divided over calling themselves feminists. Some feel like when you call yourself a feminist, you're automatically branded uh, a troublemaker for no reason or that angry, bitter, mature, single women are feminists and the happier ones who are married or you know have life going well are not necessarily feminist. This is not necessarily so, uh, but it's what Africa has come to paint being a feminist is about. For me, from my perspective, being a feminist is as simple as saying that I believe that the woman should be treated as equally as the men. That's simply what it means, you know, when you say someone is a feminist, because we all cannot deny the fact that there is gender inequality. There is a way women are treated in particular circles, particularly in Africa, where you're treated like you're less human. Uh, in some places you can't, sh you know, shake a man, you can't take particular roles, you can't do particular jobs simply because you're a woman or you can't speak in particular places. This is all it means to be a feminist, just saying we're both human beings, we both have brains, we both have arms and legs, treat me equally, you know, um, as human as you are. The Nollywood film industry from inception has been great on stories, telling the African story, telling the Nigerian story, stories that are peculiar to our culture and our people and you know our society. And I would love for Nollywood into the future um, to get to a place where our stories and the quality of our films you know, stand side by side 
Um, I mean, we started with the era where stories were great, the, and the picture and the quality wasn't that great, sound wasn't great. Then we then got to a point where we felt, okay, we need to do more with our picture and sound. And then we go all techy with the pictures and HD and stuff, and then the story starts um, suffering. So what I want the future of the Nigerian film industry to be is to have a healthy balance between the two. Let's continue telling these great stories, you know, that are st our own stories. And as well, let's have great technical quality, great pictures, great sound, great production design. You know, let all the elements come together to tell a perfect and beautiful story from Africa. My advice to any young person, male or female, um, looking to become a filmmaker, looking to get into the Nigerian film industry, uh, first thing I would always say is know what film is about. Um, talent is never enough. Yes, you know, you feel like you're in love with film, you've seen a lot of films, but you still need to get that film education. Um, however you get it, either formal or, in or informal, you need to learn about the craft, learn what filmmaking is. Um, it's enough to love, it's good to love films, but it's not enough. Learn the rudiments of it, learn the foundations of it, learn the basics of it, learn, you know, how to tell a story, learn the plot structure, you know, learn everything that equips you to be that storyteller you want to be in the right way, not just in, a, in, in any haphazard way. That is the only way then that you can become successful as a filmmaker or make any impact at all, or even get any satisfaction at all from yourself being a storyteller or a filmmaker. Well, balance between being a mother of four children and being a filmmaker um, at my level um, is a bit of a challenge, but I'm lucky because it gets easier by the year. My difficult years are in the past. My kids are practically teenagers now, so um, they handle themselves better, they take care of themselves better. What they need now is just, you know, the adults, uh, supervision here and there you know but they're not like little kids that you know you have to really babysit and all of that so it's made it easier and it's getting easier as the years are going on but then also what I say is that you make time for what is important to you which is basically how I've you know run being a mother I make time for my children yes we do homework and other things as well as make time for my work which is my livelihood and my passion If I wasn't a filmmaker, I'd probably be an artist or a painter or maybe a fashion designer or something still along the lines of the arts. These are things that I did as a child and I really loved doing. I loved drawing and painting and designing clothes. So I would have ended up in one of these other places also, I mean, within the arts as well. What might be interesting to know about me is that I'm really, 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 really a shy person. Yes, I know it's hard to believe because I'm a director and all I'm supposed to be tough and mean and I behave so on set. But when it comes down to it, like in front of the camera or when I have to address a crowd or things like that, I really am shy when it doesn't have to do directly with my work. My philosophy in life is whatever you do, do it well. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it well. And this has guided my life. I'm very passionate about whatever I do. I'm a perfectionist. Um, my sister says I have OCD, but that's how I am. I, and I think it's because of this. I like for everything to be done properly. And I like to keep pushing until I'm sure that I've achieved the very best before moving on. <laughs>